part of Double P Media, doublepmedia.com. All hail for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth's proclamation. Hail. Hail. This podcast episode will be discussing the most recently released episodes on Netflix. Make sure you have watched them before listening, or you might be spoiled. You have been warned, so it is written, so shall it be done. Hail. Welcome to Podcast Lilibet. Matt here with you. We are discussing the rest of season six part one which consists of three episodes that we haven't talked about yet episode two which is two photographs episode three which is this moi oui and episode four which is aftermath all three written by the showrunner peter morgan and directed by christian shoku the way that we're going to do this is that we might actually have it where this is broken up into two podcasts depending on how long my co-host talks it may be three because i'm going to be short and sweet this time around that never happens you folks know that never happens uh but it is my pleasure to welcome back our special podcast host the duke of wales this time spelling like he's wailing into the air it's bubba bubba welcome back <laughs> Matt, it is so exciting to talk about these three episodes of The Crown, the end of part one of this final season, a storyline that really can touch some nerves. I think it's going to be exciting. I can't wait to talk about it. I'm glad that you're here with me to talk about it because I think we both probably have some issues about it to uh, work ourselves through. Hopefully we'll be therapeutic towards each other. But let's get right into rating the second episode, Two Photographs. Here's your synopsis. Cameras flash and media circus swirls as Diana and Dodie spend more time together. In retaliation, Charles stages a fatherly photo op with his son. Oh, hail Her Royal Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Hail. The Queen shall now hear proclamations of ratings for this episode of The Crown on Netflix. Bubba, how would you rate Season 6, Episode 2, Two Photographs? I'd give it 8 out of 10 double Ps. Double Ps? Publicity photos. This was the best of these three. I still think somehow the first episode of this season is the best. Producers of the show know the viewers know what's going to come happening. And so it's a way to see how people are acting who don't know what's going to happen. Like the people making the show know what's going to happen next. The audience knows what's going to happen next, but having our look into the characters when they have no idea what's going to happen next. Fascinating. I really liked this episode a lot. I really liked it too. In fact, I gave it 8.5 out of 10, what I like to call triple S's. Triple S's? Yeah. Scottish stone skippings. Oh man, that's good. You got a uh, good stone skipping when you're in Scotland. <laughs> well, yeah, it's going to say if you're going to if you're going to skip stones, why not in Scotland? But I did love the look into the two photographers. They couldn't have been any more different and represent the people that they were taking photographs uh, perfectly. I, I love that. Mm -hmm. um, one of them was, in fact, completely made up, and that was the Duncan Muir, uh, the Scottish photographer. But, uh, you know, again, this is a fictionalized story, so I can let that go. I really liked, and I don't know how much of this was fictionalized or how much of it was taken from biographies. I haven't really looked, but you got a good look into how Elizabeth really looked at Diana at, at this later point. And again, like you said, nobody knows what's going to happen to her. Right. Um, and it, maybe you can say that she was a little bit judgmental. Um, I think she makes a fair point when she talks about bringing a helicopter into Derbyshire just to see a psychic being a little bit over the top, like she does at the end. Um, one of the things that I absolutely love, though, in this episode specifically was the humor, because there's very little humor in these episodes. No. And I loved William and Harry teaming up to get out of wearing kilts bad idea wearing kilts i loved it uh, i thought that was funny i needed that levity to set us up for the just the gut punch that is the next episode i'm glad you found some humor in it 
I thought it was also very believable. Again, I have no idea if this is exactly how the two boys acted to this publicity photo, but I thought it was very believable. I thought they showed logic and reason, certainly William, and so fun, true, exciting. And let me say, in defense of kilts, I've only wore a kilt once as a Halloween party, actually. I have a lot of Scottish in my ancestry. But I thought it was great. I'm like, oh boy, we should all wear kilts. This thing's great. I too have a lot of Scottish ancestry in my blood. In fact, we were Muradox before we came across and landed on this land over here in the United States. So Mm -hmm. I've never worn a kilt, never will wear a kilt. Um, Won't even touch bagpipes. Stop the podcast immediately. I I mean, you know, it's just me. That's, I can't, I, you know, I kilt the kilts. Her Royal Majesty Queen Elizabeth II approves these proclamations of ratings. So it is written, so shall it be done. Hail. Let's just let you know that perhaps... You didn't need to know that much about me. Perhaps you'd <laughs> rather tell me what you thought about this particular episode. We would love, absolutely love, love to hear from you. So please send your posts to at LilibetPod, L-I-L-I-Bet Pod on the site formerly known as Twitter, or you can find all of Double P Media's social media at the word double, the letters P H. Q that includes Facebook, facebook.com slash word double the letters P H Q. Uh, you can send emails to me, Matt's audio blog at gmail.com, M A T T S audio blog, all run together at gmail.com. And you can always leave comments on our YouTube videos, which you can find at Double P Media's YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at the word double the letter P, the word media that's also their url for their website so check it out and we want you to hit the like button please for our videos but even if you can't do that we would much rather you subscribe Mm -hmm. so that you can know when we're going to get another actress who played diana in another exciting show called murders at the end of the world which bubba is doing a let's solve series on right now you can find that all at the double p media youtube channel also there's a contest no one's entered it yet i'm not surprised we did get a comment from our colleague bubba priscilla who maintains that my contests are always way way too hard she always maintains uh and did on so on the contest video which you will find a link for in the youtube notes that my contests are just way too hard, um, that I should just give the $100 gift card from Amazon away to a random person who sends in feedback. So do you think I should do that? Whoa. I don't know. I thought I was going to, we could have a second prize of like a $1 Amazon gift card for the easiest question. Who's older, Prince William or Prince Harry? (laughs) But, uh, (laughs) uh, you know, maybe, maybe we should have the listeners come up with the trivia question that'd be good so priscilla should create it there you go let's get into our 65 second recap of season two episode two two photographs we begin with the introduction of two photographers one mario brenner who is real the other duncan muir who is not and see their differing attitudes towards why they take photographs After the royals are briefed about Diana and Dodie and the implications of a potential relationship, Mumu wants to know if his son is doing his part and puts his staff in an awkward position. He then puts Dodie and Diana in an awkward position by hiring Brenner to take photographs of them in order to further their relationship out into the public. Brenner gets his shots and makes a mint. Diana and Charles agree to be brilliant at parenting, but then the photos come out interrupting Diana's anti-landmine campaign and prompting Boland to suggest a counterphoto taken by Duncan Muir which does recapture the headlines. At the end, the Queen calls Diana reckless, but hopes that she finds peace as Diana and Dodie further isolate themselves in the south of France. (music) 
So we put all of our topics for this particular episode on a tiny wheel. Not too many spaces on this wheel, so it sh- these wheels should go pretty quickly. Uh, but then we give the wheel a spin, and wherever the topic comes up, that's the one that we discuss. Let's spin the wheel. It landed on probably the least important thing to talk about, but it's a topic you love talking about. It's about PR person Mark Bolland. And so it's a it's a question for us. It's a parliamentary debate. It says, is Mark Bolland the best PR person or the worst PR person ever? We should put this. That's a question. That's a question. I think that we should put this to the House of Commons. Uh, Yeah, we're very common. So sure. Is Mark Bolin a failure to His Royal Majesty as a public relations representative and as a private secretary? I yield the floor to Lord Baba for the first argument. Will your argument, Baba? All right, look, let's get to it. It's the end result that should matter in, in everything. So Mark Bolland, as portrayed in this show, is terrible about everything. Like he, he needs a PR person to help him with PR. However, the end result of this photo of Prince Charles and his two boys was smart. It was brilliant. Those are good photos. So even though he does a terrible job selling them, terrible job explaining why you should do them, really just being terrible, the end result was successful. So a bit like me as a podcast host, the end result matters. It doesn't matter about all the other stuff. So I'm saying the best PR person ever. Let's go, Mark Bollock. That's a wonderful argument. Let's Man, turn to... Real long pause there, your, representative. your, your honor. Uh, let's turn to Representative Murdoch. Murdoch. Yo. Yeah. Uh, very important that you understand. Mark Boland is a failure to His Royal Majesty as a public relations representative and as a private secretary. He is a sham. Oh. No, in fact, he is a triple S. Triple S? A sing song charlatan. Oh, blimey, that w- works. That's correct. He can't even be good enough to spell charlatan correctly. Let me give you an example of his sing-song silliness in this very episode when trying to convince Charles to do the counter photo. And I quote, I couldn't help but being struck by the two very different cultures at play here. Saint-Tropez and Scotland. Is scandal? Dignity. Irresponsibility? Duty. Selfishness? Principle. A tabloid princess? As opposed to a broadsheet prince. Now, how do you feel about doing a counterfoil? I rest my case, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, can I say that unlike some barristers here, I didn't try to insult anybody by doing their accent. You tell me that I could have done an accent and got me case heard sooner? Why, I should have. See, I didn't do that. I spoke in my native accent as respect for yours. So, therefore, once again, the end result is what matters. We shall put this on the poll. Hmm. For the House of Commons, oh. the House of Commoners, to decide. Oh. Oh. We shall put this up at Lilibet Pod mm. on the site formerly known as Twitter, L I L I Bet Pod. Mm. And thus concludes this parliamentary debate.
I think you beat me, Bubba. Spin the wheel, please. And where did it land? You know, it's real kind of you, Matt, to force someone to spin and then for someone to talk about where it landed. Why do why am I even spinning? Why don't I just read one of these things on the wheel and pick? But sure, let's go to it. It landed on Mario and Duncan. These two photographers, which to me didn't quite get the spotlight episode that sometimes we have had from other non-royal family members when they kind of step into the lead. Mario really feels like he had a bit of a kind of a spotlight on himself for a bit at the beginning. And then he just really, we didn't learn more about the character at all. Similar with Duncan. Duncan, I guess we get an idea of what he represents, but in neither case did I feel like this was a good character study. And so even though I really like this episode of them and I like the idea of, okay, would you invade someone's privacy? violently, you know, dangerously, illegally invade someone's privacy if it meant that, you know, you could have a huge payday and support your family versus are you willing to be a PR person like the other photographer really is? So I I like that idea, but these specific characters, I don't know if we got great insight into. What did you think? I think the importance, especially of examining Mario Brenner is, is seeing how that single set of photographs i mean yes there was paparazzi before there's always been paparazzi but to get that kind of money i mean he ended up with i mean i know that they said eight hundred thousand pounds for the set with the mirror but he ended up with well over a million pounds by the time it was all said and done in real life wow and and at that was in 1997 Um, so I think that did set the tone for what happened in Paris, why there were so many photographers. If you can get good shots like that. Now, the question is, how can you get any better shots than the 700 other people that are standing around the hotel, um, you know, in episode three, but, uh, I love how they focused on him and how slimy he was slimy to basically elevate <laughs> sliminess <laughs> in, in the name of <laughs> in the name of getting a shot and making money uh you know his methods were crude um as you said but effective. mostly illegal and, but effective um but they got the know, end result he got the end result and he got the dough and i thought that was fascinating on the other hand you have this duncan muir who was a fictionalized character which i kind of had a problem with But I love the fact that he already kind of had a relationship with the queen from her part. You know, she spent a lot of time up there in Balmoral, and he'd been taking pictures of her for a long time. And I loved how she would actually come over to him and speak. I mean, the the camaraderie of that was so charming to me, I guess I should say, that I absolutely love the fact that he was the one that was chosen and the fact that because his wife was making him pack everything including you know the kitchen sink when he was going to take the photo (laughs) actually made him nervous i love the fact that you know he was nervous yeah and and, but he was also really good at making william and harry feel comfortable Mm. maybe if he threw some stones oh what's the dog's name all of that stuff was just absolutely endearing to me so i did find probably i mean i don't know if you'd really call that a a character defining thing but you know whereas mario has to steal his photographs duncan mines his and that's one of those things that i just feel was a beautiful look at those two different personalities all right well We've been spending these first couple of topics not talking about any of the royals. Let's see how it's going to go. So it landed on more and more reckless. Reckless. Which is what the queen called Diana. Mm. So let's talk about all things Diana and Dodie. Um, Yes, I firmly believe it is proven fact that Diana was a terrorist. She oh, terrorized brother. those poor people in Derbyshire. Oh, and, brother. And Dodie did, in fact, fly a helicopter there just so that they could go see a psychic. Uh, <laughs> Rita Rogers is kind of a fascinating person, by the way. 
I don't know if she's still with us or not, but uh, I think she is. Um, and uh, she'd done several readings for Diana before, uh, but just the, the idea of doing it, and the way that Elizabeth gets so worked up about uh, about a helicopter ride. Maybe she doesn't take too many helicopter rides, but think of all the troubles that she's caused just going to other places and and stirring things up. Did you think anything about their relationship, the way it was developing? I mean, we obviously know how it's going to end, so it's kind of hard not to look at it just kind of like going, do I really want to get invested in this or not? Um, but I did like the briefing from the private secretary to all of them at the beginning mm -hmm. and how just the kind of the discomfort that came up over that. Um, I did love how Charles, and I, I know this is supposed to be all things that Diana and Dodie, but I'm also including the way everybody reacts to him, how Charles and Diana really seemed like they were going to kind of work out an amical relationship for their children in terms of, you know, how they were going to take care of things. Can we do be you, Do you know how many years had they been separated by this point? Uh, they'd only been divorced separated. a year, but I think they'd okay. been separated for a couple of years before that, hadn't they? Basically, he was living at the home um, where Camila would come and visit, and she was living in Kennington Palace on her mm -hmm. own. So, um, but yeah, they'd they'd been they'd been apart for co quite some time, but they'd only been divorced for I think about a year. Mm. Um, but I like how uh, they were starting to be in that relationship until uh, Boland. Uh, threw that grenade at him about uh, Diana talking to the press. Uh, um, I was very um, upset by the fact that the way the press treated Diana, I don't know why that became that much more of an important question as to who she was dating as opposed to the things she was trying to say about landmines. I felt terrible for her there. Are any of these things striking you? Is there anything that struck you about Diana and Dodie. Well, if you live through this time, it was a worldwide news event, Diana's work in these landmines. And I thought it was so powerful and everything she did, it, 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 it felt on the show as it really did in real life. Like, wow, how is it takes somebody of this fame to deal with a subject that theoretically they shouldn't have any knowledge about these landmines to get some of these points across. So I, you know, it was really just just really brilliant, but you can't focus on that because so much of this episode really is about their relationship and their relationship in some ways is unrelatable. Like, have you ever kind of been in a relationship like this? Yes, we can't have the press and the pravarati and all the kind of attributes with it, but have you ever been in a relationship where both parties are kind of like, well, maybe, maybe not. It, it, it's just kind of fascinating to watch if still at the same time you're a bit like huh i guess uh, i would say i haven't really had a relationship like this and so it makes it very kind of odd to see these two in Dodie and diana in this kind of well are we really friends is this a thing hey by the way i'm being sued for breaking up my engagement i mean it's very tough to uh relate to at least for me on that side yeah i mean in terms of and obviously the the po photos blew it up otherwise uh interesting that the the british um royalty got a briefing well before there were a whole lot of photos of them about mm -hmm. their comings and goings um so i guess somebody was keeping tabs on her pretty well already i've never had a hush hush relationship um <laughs> QT, hush hush yeah i've i've never had one of those so um I I've, can't imagine ever being in a situation where I would be with somebody where I was trying to figure out whether I wanted to be with them or not. I mean, obviously, yeah. there's a little bit of a natural process in that, but not to that degree that we see uh, played out in these episodes. So, I, no, I guess I guess not. I, I suppose I've never been in a relationship like that. What about the fact that Dodie is still getting... And maybe not so much in this episode as in episode three, but it already um, between episode one and this episode, Dodie to me feels like he, you know, he's got his dad on his back about. Um, oh, well, yeah, the whole you know, this whole mini season of four episodes, yeah. Dodie Dodie can't shake free of the person who's 
acceptance he really longs for. And you see that more in this fourth and final episode, or sorry, third episode. But yeah, him yeah. and his dad, oh boy. Yeah. I mean, you just you just kind of feel Mumu's shadow hanging over everything all the time. Or at least I did as I was watching this second episode for sure. Well, how about this? Did you, you know, Dodie in so many ways would, if this was like a romantic comedy movie, Dodie in so many ways would kind of be the the heel. He's dumped his fiance and trying to go, maybe this is the Heartbreak Kid. Spoiler, if anybody hasn't seen the movies, uh, the Heartbreak Kid, the original with Charles Grodin and Elaine May. But anyway, you still do kind of like Dodie. I think as as a viewer, you're meant to. It's just you wish he would, you know, reach that point that the show has him reach uh, right before his tragic end. So how did you yeah. feel about Dodie? Do you still like him? You know what? The And again, this is probably um, because of just it just seems so fictionalized and unrealistic. But I did not like him doing the whole I, I, I still kind of rooted for him. Until the point where he hung up the phone on his dad in episode three. But we'll talk about that then. Um, but I, at this point in this episode, yes, I still very much like Dodie. I think that he's a guy who's still trying to figure out who he is, who he is in a place with, in, in terms of the standing with his father, trying to figure out his standing with Diana, but he's having fun and he's trying to, you know, he's, he's actually started to get himself a little invested in it as opposed to um it just being a favor for daddy like it was in the first episode so no oh, yeah i i i did like um especially this actor's portrayal of him i thought was very good and there are plenty of articles and podcasts out there um especially the official podcast on this particular episode where elizabeth debecky talks about how that actor really um, not just in the scenes, but also in just as they were preparing for the scenes, really being open and receptive to what she was thinking and what she was feeling um, and how that was, she felt that Diana, it, it perfectly reflected how she felt that Diana would have felt about Dodie, about him being open and receptive Um to all of this newness that he's a very shy person, you know, and he doesn't yes. really uh, have any of this, but he's willing to go to bat for her um, and to listen to what her frustrations are. I thought that that was a, a very interesting insight from the actress regarding um, the actor and the character. Anything else? That's it for me. We know that what's worse than this episode is going to be the other episodes as far as Bubba is concerned. But let's play a quick game of what's worse regarding this episode. What's worse? Okay, Bubba. There are two questions here, so I can ask one of them and you can ask one of them. Which one would you rather ask? And do you want to go first or do you want me to ask first? Uh, I want you to ask first, if that's okay. Okay. Um, my question is this. What's worse, being Mario Brenna and taking the photos of Diana and Dodie, or being Duncan Muir and having to take pictures of Prince Charles in a kilt from a lower oh, angle? Oh, terrible. Terrible. Who wrote these? We're never being. What are you talking about? I, I didn't. I didn't write these. We're not no. being admitted into the United Kingdom ever again with these terrible questions that I don't approve. Um, I'm gonna say that one person is illegally, you know, uh, entering property, destroying someone's, you know, privacy, mm -hmm. and then one person, if his camera's too low and there's some wind, is gonna take pictures of somebody's private. So, um, royal private. So, I guess I'll have to say. Duncan Muir. <laughs> you know, at least Mario, while he's being illegal and terrible, you could say he's, you know, kind of cunning. He's intelligent. He kind of is street smart. You know, it's not exactly easy to to get the perfect photo in all these conditions. So there's some positives about him where Duncan Muir is literally having to stage the photo and say, hey, stand closer to your father. I mean, 
Duncan Muir, the worst. Well, I think that that's probably the winning argument, to be perfectly honest, Bubba. But I've got to argue Mario Brenner because that's how a oh. high school debate team works. Oh. Uh, Mario Brenner is worse mm. because he didn't even allow Diana and Dodie the chance to fix their hair before that they they he took their photographs i do um, dislike that a lot okay you're convincing me to your side high school debate team <laughs> uh yeah i mean what you're gonna take a picture of us oh it's kissing that's fine but my hair is messed up from the wind or from him running his hand through my hair uh, i can't have that it's one of those things i am diana i am a former hrh you can't have my hair being all messed up mario brenner you're the worst and besides that duncan muir probably got some wonderful facial expressions from prince charles when those skipping stones splash some water up underneath his kilt yeah uh, you know it was cold cold day there on the on the moors <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bubba, what's the other question? Oh, there is one other. So you ready? Uh -oh. What is worse, hiring Pavarazzi to take pictures of your son or having Mark Bolland as your public relations consultant? Boy, Mark Bolland is taking shots left and right. Matt, um, I'll go. I went first last time. You go first this time. Well, obviously, I have to side with taking having Mark Bolland as your public relations consultant as no. my counterpart in the house of commoners also oh, no. did um mark bolin is just a sham um no. he's a sing-songy can't get anything right mm. can't even get his prints on the front page no. unless duncan muir takes the photograph um so i i mean this whole idea um uh, i i believe even I, I should say he's also a conniver he's just as bad as mario brenner because he tells his he tells his client charles to lie yeah. to his children oh we're doing this to keep we're doing this to keep the pre the rest of the press away from you for the rest of your trip here boys that's just an out and out lie nobody was going to get on the grounds in bar Marl. there's so much security there um come up with a better lie mark poland you're not even how can you be a good public relations person if you can't even lie well wow oh, that is tough so you believe mark bolland is worse is worse than Mumu. Mumu. yes i do okay well now hold on hold on so i mentioned that there's things in these episodes it's like how can a human being relate to and i can't relate to this either obviously my dad didn't hire anybody to take Pavarazzi photos of me well why not because he was a lame dad that's why <laughs> exactly that's yeah. better that's but that's worse sorry that's worse oh because what i thought is i thought well what's a what's a correlation you know nobody can relate to your dad hiring Pavarazzi to take photos of you but what is close so there was a young singer back in 2011 who her mother paid four thousand dollars to have these people produce a music video for her daughter uh, you know her daughter singing a song you know you know a mom paying four thousand dollars to kind of get her daughter a a, a song and a, in a fancy music video for her song mm -hmm. and then that was released upon the world and that was known as rebecca black's friday 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 gotta get busy on friday i mean that released terrible singing on the world all because a parent was trying to you know get some fame for their child and so that is obviously worse rebecca friday's black is obviously worse it's the equivalent of muhammad getting mumu Pavarazzi. Terrible. And if you disagree, you have to listen to Rebecca Black's Friday for the next 24 hours straight. So, listeners, you decide. Do you want to listen to that song for 24 hours straight? Or do you want to hire Mike Bolland to be your PR person? I think you would rather hire Mike Mark Bolland, a.k.a. getting some Pavarazzi to film you is worse. Ladies and gentlemen, if you agree with me, simply... Yeah. 
follow me on the site formerly known as Twitter at L I L I Bet Pod. It's also where you'll find those polls that we're going to put okay. up to see who the winner is. Sure. And we need you to vote on those. But if you agree with Bubba, yeah. block him instantly on the site no, formerly known as Twitter. How dare you? How dare you? If you block me, I will. I will go. I'll get you a DM of me singing Friday by Rebecca Black. There, that'll <laughs> teach you. What's worse? What's worse? We're going to save the history notes at the very end of the podcast because I put them all into one video and I'm too uh, lazy to split them back up. So, uh, folks, at the, at the very last uh, edition, whatever episode it is, you will get all of the history notes for this. But let's get into episode three. Episode three is. Dis moi oui. Again, written by the showrunner and directed by Christian Shoku. And we have a synopsis like this. Dodie's father urges him to propose, but marriage is the last thing on Diana's mind. Later, a high-speed car chase with paparazzi ends in disaster. Terrible synopsis. It just puts all of the damper and there's no fun in this episode whatsoever. But Bubba, how did you rate this episode? Well, I gave this third episode of season six, I only gave it seven double N's out of 10. Seven, what, that's low, wait, double N's? Right, and since we're talking French words, I just went, non, non. Oh, this, don't. <laughs> I am the non royal watcher i'm the person who came on this podcast because i thought it'd be interesting hey here's somebody who isn't really fascinated never been fascinated with royal family hey let's have him talk about the crown and see if he enjoys it and stuff and even though i've not really been someone fascinated with royal history i don't know much of this history as an american even i at a certain point in this episode and really in this storyline as it got closer and closer to the accident I'll just be honest. I didn't want to continue watching the episode. It's mm -hmm. not that it's not well acted. It's not that it's not, a, you know, incredible drama. It's not that it's not fascinating. But even I was a bit like, I'm not sure I need to see these, you know, what I would call the last hour of their lives and such. Mm -hmm. And so it was very tough. Again, it was brilliantly acted as someone who is, doesn't know any of these uh, facts or kind of issue, you know, incidents like buying the ring. It is fascinating, but because I know what's coming, because I am someone like the whole audience who knows what's coming, even me, I was like, gosh, really? Oh, man, I don't know. And so it, this is a weird thing where the episode is not bad in any way, but I really could have, if I could have skipped the last 20 minutes, I would have. That's an odd rating. Uh, listeners, I hope you disagree and don't didn't feel the way I did, but it's just an odd thing to feel while watching the episode. So that's my thought. What about you? Oh, it's interesting. Uh, once again, I rated higher than you, uh, but I think that I had some more specific problems with what I was rating than, you know, and, and you're wanting to just not really get yourself immersed in this part of the drama right. uh, is perfectly understandable. Uh, I'm sure that these episodes will be triggering for people who were fans of the you know the real diana I, I i can't imagine how difficult to watch that would be for somebody like that i like you was somewhat disinterested uh in the story of well once the death occurred i became a little more interested but i wasn't fascinated with diana before that um this story was really tough so i gave it lower than i did episode two i gave it eight out of ten what i like to call double s's double s's yeah, smudging stalkers. No I mean, boy. think of that poor oh, jewelry boy. shop employee that has to get all of those dirty palm prints and everything <laughs> off of that jewelry window. It's just awful. Um, not as bad as the rest of the episode, though. I mean, the drama to me, I I thought it was fantastic. I loved being up into their last moments um, simply because I just love the way that that builds tension uh, because you know what's coming. However... I didn't really like the way that they spent those last few moments of their lives. I could not suspend my disbelief that they were able in an afternoon and evening, able to resolve some major life problems that they had right up before they died. 
you know mm. that's just a little bit too much on the side of fairy tale and this story is kind of a fairy tale and i understand it's fictionalized but i just couldn't get past that it's like there's no way that diana is reassuring her kids that she's not marrying Dodie. there's no way that she's coming to the realization on her own that she needs to get her life straight um i think that she probably already knew that long before then uh there's no Let's way hope. that Dodie is finally standing up to muhammad you know uh even though he's faking it to diana he's finally trying to find the courage to be able to enact it at least and resolving that he actually will do so right before they get in the car it's just a little bit too much for me um on the other hand you know muhammad being so overbearing seems perfectly realistic to me given that he's the one that kind of instigated the whole pageant inquiry and all of that um it seems to me that he was a lot more obsessed with this uh potential couple than anybody else was including Dodie and diana from what i can tell mm -hmm. so uh yeah so this one's a little bit lower just a little bit lower half a point eight out of ten double s's for me send us your feedback this podcast is nothing without the thoughts of sensible people unlike myself okay i'll include bubba <laughs> i'll include bubba in the sensible people even yeah but you know we need the thoughts of sensible people who like television and who like this series or don't dislike this series i mean you're more than mm -hmm. welcome to dislike it too but we yeah. want to hear from you at little bit pod on a site formerly known as twitter or at the word double letters phq on all of the social medias like twitter instagram hive and facebook even facebook.com slash at the word double the letters phq join their little group there and post up what you're thinking there you can also leave comments on the double p media youtube find youtube.com slash at the word double the letter p the word media and leave comments on our videos hit that like button while you're there if you like the video definitely hit that subscribe button and that notification bell yo as john mcgonagall my friend likes to say so that we can reach the younger audience yo hit that notification bell uh it's not working for anybody especially for me me saying yo is like i don't know it's just it's just makes me seem older than i already am <laughs> so i'll stop that but uh please hit that notification bell because we do have other great shows on the double p media youtube that you are going to want to check out including right now murders at the end of the world or murder at the end of the world i keep getting murders i just keep wanting to say murders only in the building for some reason uh, because bubba's podcast about that is a great success uh, but we definitely want to hear from you without question Susie Arbrock expresses concern for Diana being in the middle of an out-of-control situation, and even as Diana discusses some of Dodie's over-the-top approach to romance, Dodie is being pressured by his father to get engaged to Diana so that Moo might consider his son an equal. Dodie takes Diana out for some shell games and ice cream in Monte Carlo, but soon a mob of fans and press chase them into a jewelry shop where Dodie mistakes a cue from Diana about a ring that she likes, thinking he will make it a gift to her and an engagement to her. Diana tells him she wants to go home, but he convinces her to make a stop in Paris, not telling her that it is to get the ring and propose. Back at Balmoral, Anne notes that William's seems a little forlorn and suggests to Philip that it's time for William to go hunting for stags. Later in the episode, William does indeed get his stag. In Paris, things get even more awkward for Diana as the press hounds the couple and Dodie's father tries to gift her and Dodie a house to live in. Additionally, she misses the window to talk to her children, William and Harry, on the phone. But as they travel, they are continually hounded by the press everywhere they go. Eventually, Diana does get to speak to William and Harry, promising them that she will soon be home and that, despite what any of the press might say, she will not be marrying Dodie anytime soon. Dodie, on the other hand, makes preparations for the proposal, but they are foiled again by the press until he and Diana get to the Ritz, where he finally proposes to Diana. Diana, and she rejects his proposal and urges him to get out from under his father's thumb. He tells her to slow down in life, but then calls his dad, and with a clever use of words and a disconnection tries to convince Diana that he has made his stand, while at the same time trying to convince Mumu that Diana has accepted the proposal. Henri Paul has a couple of drinks, but is called back into driving service to take Dodie and Diana back to Dodie's apartment. And in the last few moments of their lives, Diana tells Dodie that he will actually find the courage to speak up to his father before they disembark, chased by the press, finally with that dog walker witnessing the accident occur. And we have topics to discuss here, Bubba, uh, but we have mm. to spin the wheel. Let's do it. I'm spinning. 
you can tell my terrible eyes what where it landed. Well, I think before we even get to this topic, I think a lot of people need to know, Matt, what does dis moi we mean? Say yes to me. Very or... terrible. You failed French, unlike me, who took two years of French in American high school and two uh, two semesters of French at an American university. And so by going to Google Translate, I find out that that means tell me yes. So obviously, moi is is the person talking. We oui is yes. So decent. Wait a minute. So say yes to me is not the same thing as saying tell me yes? N no, not at all. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, good. So now let's get to the topic at hand. How come Matt can't use Google Translate like I do? No kidding. The first topic is about the what what we call the chronicles of hysteria where we've got the boat ride hey let's get the ring oh the ring isn't here we got to get to paris to get the ring and the ice cream matt talk us through this you know this is they are living in the center of a of a storm and uh, what did you think about it yeah um i found some of this to be actually a little more scary than the end of this episode to be perfectly honest and maybe it's just cuz mm. you know what what's going to happen yeah but when you've got teenage girls chasing you, that's horrifying. I mean, it's got to be horrifying to have teenage girls chasing after you. And then all of a sudden, there's a bunch of other guys um, who are probably checking out the teenage girls who are now starting to, you know, raise their eyebrows to you when you're Princess Diana. That had to be terrifying to be trapped in a jewelry shop and then forced, yes. forced by your boyfriend to pick a ring kind of boyfriend to pick something yeah. out mm. um i mean it, it, that just had to feel horrific for diana and i do like the fact that dodie did apologize for all of that and everything but um dodie's kind of on his own trek here this is where you start to to see that he's not really thinking for himself here he's just trying to impress well, his dad yeah but that is thinking for himself it's just it's just thinking the wrong way, right? He's thinking, you know, his dad is dangling all these golden carrots. Hey, you'll get this. You'll get this. You know, you'll 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 finally have earned my respect and all this stuff. And so he is thinking about himself because he wants that stuff so bad. Yeah. He's just not really thinking of Diana and the reality of what all this would really mean. Right. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that this setup um helped to make the whole motor scooter paparazzi even that much more menacing mm. um also it, it, it's just that um the idea that you're getting chased halfway through a town all the way back to a dock by people i, I can't i've played in bands i've been very popular in those bands I've never, ever had to deal with that. Of course, most of my fans were, you know, 60 plus and weren't, I was going to still able to outrun them. So, <laughs> but, uh, people who love the blues, uh, do get a little bit obsessive, but never that kind of obsessive. I can't even imagine what it must be like to just be a B list star living in Hollywood where you can't even go out and have a coffee and somebody's you know, somebody across the street snapping a picture at you all the time. Um, that just seems like a crazy life. I would never want it. Yeah, it is almost enjoyable when they have little moments when they're not swamped, like when they when they go in and are getting gelato and before, you know, they've really been recognized in swamp. You know, those little moments are almost like like heaven. And, you know, like the fact that you can have a moment's peace and a moment to yourself, they are heaven, but this is just invasion of your privacy in a level that no one can understand. And it, it's horrific. Yeah, totally agreed. Anything else on this or shall we spin the wheel again? Let's spin it. Okay. I can read this because it's one big word, paparazzi. Mm, well, right. we were just kind of talking about them. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it seems fitting that the wheel would land there next. Bubba, do you feel like, given, and I'm not saying that Mario Brenner, again, was the creator of this culture, but it hasn't died down in 26 years. 
everything is still just a frenzy. Everybody's looking for that shot. And I don't know who's buying them anymore, you know, to be perfectly honest. But you still see them all over the place, usually well, in some kind of compromising position. You can go to any number of sites on the Internet now. So it, it just this is as long as people crave to touch stardom. Right. You know, this in, industry will endure. And it's just sickening to me. Well, it, it's it's us. So when you say it's sickening, it's it's human beings. You know, these are these are human beings who want to see these images, human beings who who may have different priorities than maybe you or I or, or listeners do. But this is supply and demand. And until until citizens stopped craving these and eating these up, and they really did, like you know, we always talk about how so many of us were alive for this part of the history where we've been watching the crown for so long and maybe we weren't alive. We didn't have recollections of any of this stuff. This was big money. I mean, there's a reason why they're saying, hey, these rags are willing to pay for this amount. It's because people wanted to see it. They made their money back. And so, you know, it's easy to attack the Pavarazzi. It's easy to attack these, you know, tabloids that want to get these photos. But in the end, the reason why they all exist is because of us, because of human beings want to see them. And that's depressing. And it, it, that doesn't seem to ever going to change in our lifetimes. And so, you know, do you wish your fellow man wasn't so crazy? I don't know that I'm, I'm rambling all over the place, but I tr tend to, you know, hate the act, uh, not the, not the person or persons in this case. Yeah, I, I guess that's the case. But, I, I, you know, I just loathe so much properties like TMZ yeah. and, and these yeah. kinds of things mm -hmm. um, that I and again, you're right. The the public craves this stuff and, and they fuel the ability for these places to be able to make money. So, no you know, it, it, the world needs a psychologist. But at the same time, <laughs> you know, the last thing I'm ever going to do is turn on tmz because i wonder what the heck snoop dogg did today um so do you think there is a is there any person in the world maybe taylor swift in our current time with her relationship uh with uh travis kelsey is there is that as close as you could come and and i gotta be honest it feels like it doesn't come anywhere near as close but uh can you think of other people who in our current world kind of match the insanity that was happening around diana at this time the kardashians mm, yeah still not i mean it's not close it's still you're not right, it's still right. not i don't think you're gonna find anyone close to to Di diana specifically diana's fame mm -hmm. um but there there's still just as many obsessions out there and they, i don't and i don't want to attack people in general so i know all the listeners on this podcast are like that's not me. I'm not the one causing all this crazy. Well, I do want to attack people. Oh, what? Uh, in general. And no. No, oh, we're not supposed to do that, are we? Okay, no, well then, no. Uh, no, it's not your fault. It's We know it's not your fault. It's right, the it's, other it's person's our fault. our fault. It's our fault, is it's, what I'd say. Our fault. It's our, it, it's the other guy's fault. No, brother. Yeah. Spin the wheel. I guess... This is tough to talk about because you it feels like this was something you mentioned in your uh, kind of little mini review when we were talking about this episode. But the episode has, for lack of a better word, unfinished business, decisions that are never resolved. And so do you want to lead us into this discussion, Matt? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that it's admirable that as characters, Diana and Dodie come to some decent life decisions about their own lives where they're at and about things that they need to correct the only pro I, I think that the 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 story of it if it had been developed out over all three of the first three episodes of season six would have been a lot more convincing to me than it all just coming together after one phone call and and one conversation about a ring um hmm. so that that was the only problem that I had with it. But as far as, you know, and who who's to say? Uh, nobody knows what happened in those hotel rooms. Uh, exactly. People will say that right. they do or whatever. But, it, it you know, and if you're going to go for drama, then this is a great route to do it. I, I don't disagree with that. I just didn't. It, 
I couldn't believe how quickly everything was wrapped up in a little bow because you have to, because you know that they're going to die in the next scene. I understand that too, but maybe just start the process a little sooner is all I was thinking. I, again, none of the actual things that you're talking about really caused me any trouble because I was so okay. desperate to be like, get us past this, please yeah. get us past yeah. this. I don't yeah. want to watch this, what's coming. Um, And so difficult to say, but it is the type of thing that the, for the characters in this scenario, they had reached a point where some things would need to get resolved as best as, as they could. And, you know, just by the nature of what's of the unknowable event that's about to occur, there would be things unresolved. So I didn't, again, I didn't really have any trouble with these type of things you're talking about, Matt. I thought, you know, I, I guess watching it once again, knowing that it's not real, but kind of giving the characters, especially Dodie, I guess I would say some self-reflection. I, I enjoyed it, even though once again, it, by this part of the episode, I was like, please, I don't, I'm not sure I want to watch this. Bubba, if you had proposed to a woman and she said no, yeah, do you think the next step for you would be to say, okay, well, let's sit down and talk about everything that we think's wrong with each other? Ooh. You know, no, but what I would say is I would imagine that if this had happened, that most likely... I wouldn't be in a logical state of mind. So I, you know, I, I might go on a crazy flight of fancy like this. Okay. Well, to the point um, that I was making about it being very good insight, mm -hmm. I thought the, the crux of what they were saying to each other painted each other's characters perfectly. Yes. I mean, I thought that was beautifully written. I thought it was an eloquent, eloquent, way to say that diana was troubled still and i thought it was an eloquent way to say that Dodie let his dad push him around i just couldn't buy it that, that they, i got to that point and i'm like okay and, and and it's because i knew what was coming it's just like yeah okay i understand that you have to make this dramatic and you have to get some of this stuff out in the out in the air before you know you go on that car ride but it just seemed a little too easy mm. to me. Um, I'll never be that mature. <laughs> never. I'll never be mature enough to sit down with somebody and discuss what's wrong with me. Never. I mean, Bubba, I know you've tried, but yeah, it's please. never going to happen. You haven't read my manifesto? I mean, like, literally, I published it online and said, you know, see Matt Murdock. But okay. <laughs> Uh, and it, uh, this is uncomfortable business. Uh, I, yes. I don't think we need to really talk about no. the, the the accident itself because you know we basically got that in the first episode. Did you, did you like how it was portrayed here? How it was almost a callback to the first episode in the and of course the man walking the walking yeah. the dog. Yeah, the dog's cute. Um, and and I loved how you know in the first episode they actually followed the car into the tunnel and all that and they kind of did with this one but i loved mm -hmm. how it stayed re the shot stayed mainly on the guy i thought that that was really well done yeah and the score at the end of that as much as we're talking about these un unfinished business stuff in my musical analysis i covered that it's called holding hands uh the pieces it will be on the season six official soundtrack which will be out on december 14th um it's an incredibly musically unresolved piece. Mm. And I thought that that was a beautiful touch um, to that ending as well. Um, so I, it was all very artfully done. I just couldn't suspend my disbelief long enough to appreciate it probably as much as a, as a whole as I did its parts, I guess. Well, okay, boy, after talking about such serious things, the way this topic is set up seems very uh, unserious, and it is, of course, how many stags are on the ball moral grounds? I mean, good grief. Well, I mean, yeah, we how many another huge one. stags? We found another Bubba? one. Oh, my goodness gracious. So 
You know, this is one of those things where I am not a hunter. I would not get a thrill of, you know, hundreds of yards away taking down one of these giant stags. But it does seem like if it's a family tradition and everybody's kind of like, go get it, William. I guess it's a it's a it's a nice moment, if you could even describe it as that. I, I don't even know what to say, Matt. What do you what did you think of this? I love how it comes kind of full circle for Diana um the, the symbolism of it because will gets his first egg how did diana really become accepted by that family when she went to balmoral and when her and philip went out and she got her own stag so i loved that uh for me the more important question is really just about william and harry and that phone call because like you've said and i have said also that that actor that has been portraying William has been fantastic in just about yes. every scene of every episode. And during that phone call, and even the young guy who played Harry in this mm -hmm. one, were both really good. They were so tentative. They were so um, worried about their mom. And they still took time to make a little fun of Dodie as well, um, which is great because that's what kids do. But I was really moved by that phone call. That, very one, that one was that moving. Very real. Yeah. That one felt that one felt probably the most real, despite the decisions that she had come to already, um, seeming uh a little bit too quick on some respect. But you knew that she wasn't gonna sit tell them that she was gonna marry Dodie, and she had no plans to do that. Um mm. uh which made the whole scene with Dodie you know, fiddling around trying to figure out how he was going to propose to her, um, even that much more kind of gut punching because it's like, dude, you got no chance. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, so, uh, but all of it, uh, again, just hats off to those two young actors because they did fantastic in that scene, I thought. 100%. So we do have one what's worse question. No, oh, no. For this particular episode. No, oh, boy. Uh, and th this one's going to be difficult, folks. We apologize it. if it's triggering yeah. uh, we, uh, in advance, but uh, the debate must be had. Baba, I'm going to ask the question. I'll give you the chance to argue first. What's worse, being chased around Monte Carlo when all you wanted was ice cream? Okay. Or being or the employee of the jewelry store who has to get all of the finger and palm prints off of the front glass window from the people chasing the people who just wanted ice cream. Okay, let's let's say it. I have been to Monaco. That place is hilly. There's actually an elevator built into certain parts so you can get all the way up to the famous casino there, you know, kind of built into the side of hills. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm saying that being chased around Monte Carlo you got to have good legs. You got to have good thighs. That is walking up a lot of hills. So no matter what, 409 can take care of the other problem. Being chased around a giant, steep, hilly Monte Carlo, that's worse. Okay. Very good. If I am Alberto Rossi, Ro Rossini, was that the owner of the jewelry shop? Yeah. All I'm, I'm thinking is... All I'm thinking is, I'm, first of all, I'm seeing dollar signs. What are they going to buy? What are they going to buy? Then I'm seeing that crowd stacking outside my window. Sure. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I've got all of this super, super wealthy, rich, you know, valuable stuff. Yes. Those yes. people are going to come and take all of my, they're going to take my livelihood away. What? No. It, um or or just or damage it to the point where i can't sell it and now i'm just out that money mm. um then the third thing i'm thinking as you know the famous people flitter off without buying a single thing from me mm. maybe they're going to buy something later but i don't know that now the crowd disperses finally probably after hours because they still think that they got to come out the front door <laughs> and now I've got so many fingerprints. That window's huge. I got to get the ladder out. Yes. I've got to get out the special cleaner, the glass cleaner, 
clean it up one time. The grease cleaner, Let's all do of it. the cleaners. And clean I got to climb up there. It's climb. like you said, it's on a hill. I'm yes. uh, the ladder's going to tip. I'm going to fall. I'm going to break my hip. That's part of the job, man. I mean, nobody asked for that. Not to have to, not to have to clean all of that up. That that's not what happens. A jewelry shop is a place of decorum, not a place no. where people. It's not a carnival where you just stick your hands everywhere and pick things up and put them. Are back you down. not sticking your hand somewhere and picking things up? Come on. <laughs> We're that gonna put laugh it on a poll. Proves that I got it right. We're gonna put it on a poll. Because oh, okay. I believe that that's much oh. more horrendous than sure. just being chased around by a bunch of teenagers. Right. Um, so at Little Bit Pod on the site formerly known as Twitter, find the poll, vote on the poll. By the way, Bubba, maybe we should address yeah. uh, how handily you defeated me in the our what's worse for the first episode while we're here. Um, uh, we don't need to go over that. People want to talk about these episodes. Well, it's just one of those things that you just beat the crap out of me on everything. Oh, man. Uh, for instance, we asked what's worse, your future father-in-law keeping you on a separate and smaller boat from your fiance, making you play at the kid's table, basically, yes. or your son wanting mm. to play Street Fighter 2 instead of enjoying Saint-Tropez. And uh, which one did I argue? You argued the smaller boat. Oh, okay. You of course. Won resoundingly. Oh, wow. 76.9% to 23.1%. Ooh. Ouch. That really got mm. me. Now, this one is fun. Oh. Bubba, because this, I don't think this has ever happened before. Let's hear it. We asked what's worse regarding season six, episode one mummy not attending your true love's 50th birthday party right or mommy or. using a car factory visit as the excuse now i'm pretty sure i voted i argued for the former right like not attending that makes more sense right i voted the rose okay. royce excuse but okay. guess what Paula? what this has never happened before mm, this we got is. so many votes yeah. on this particular poll right first of all we broke the site formerly known as twitter it stopped working for about 0.5 seconds. Be very careful. Elon will attack you like he likes to attack a well, biker. Mm. Just 0.5. It recovered quickly. Elon. Thank goodness. Um, because, um, and by the way, my name's Ma not Bob, Bob Iger. Thank you sure. very much. Easy for um, you to say. <laughs> easy for anybody to say. Uh, at any rate, a 50 50 tie. What? I have no, I, there had to have been. Thousands of votes, and yet mathematically, perfectly, yep. mm -hmm. perfectly, perfectly, 50 50 tie. So, Bubba, I demand a recount. Like Diana and Dodie, we have unresolved issues, brother. Oh, man. Don't certify this, Pence. You can do what you want to do, you can do the right choice. And that is going to do it for this podcast episode. We still have episode four of part one to talk about which we will do in the next podcast. Thanks to Bubba for joining me once again at little bit pod for all of our polls and to give us your thoughts about any of these episodes. You can also contact at the word, double the letters P H Q across all social medias, Twitter, Instagram, hive and Facebook, facebook.com slash the word, double the letters P H Q. And we want you to like subscribe and comment on our YouTube videos, youtube.com slash at the word double, the letter P, the word media. Thanks for joining us this time around. We want to send a quick set of well wishes out to Susan as well. She was supposed to be with us. She couldn't make it, but hopefully we'll hear from her in the very near future. This is Matt. Take care.
send emails to mattsaudioblog at gmail.com and find all back episodes and other information at mattsaudioblog.com. <laughs>